Hello, good people of YouTube, Mount Batten here, and today we have some very, very interesting and exciting news from the development blog. We got the dev blog for update 11.2, which is the Rogue Wave event, early access to Italian DDs, and some new gameplay improvements and upgrades, along with the French cruiser split, which are battle cruisers, it seems, although they are... On the other end of the battle cruiser spectrum from the German battle cruisers, these are more of super cruisers, large cruisers, but like the French cruisers are already super cruisers, essentially. I mean, the uh, Henri had the largest cruiser guns in the game for a while until we started to see more and more super cruisers get added into the game. But they, they are some very strange cruisers, let's just say. Um, but I, I do believe battle cruiser probably fits them the most. But, again, we'll get to that in due time. We are going to go in the order of the dev blog's release. I will link to the dev blogs in the description down below if you want to read along as I read aloud. Any relevant images or artwork will be thrown up on screen for you guys to look at. So let's go ahead and get started with the first of the two dev blogs. Closed test for 11.2, Rogue Wave, Early Access to Italian Destroyers, and other additions. Details of the new features of the upcoming update 11.2. Italian Destroyers Part 1. An update 11.2 will be opening early access to the first Tech Tree branch of Italian Destroyers, along with a new event, Clash of Courage. The Italian Navy, known for its love of destroyers, used to organize competitions between divisions of the same class of ships to identify the most successful crews. During the end game event, you'll be able to choose which team you want to support and pick carefully, each one offers a unique reward. The Clash of Courage works similarly to the New Year's Eve, Aircraft Bureau's Rivalry, and Battles of the Beast events. By participating, you can earn Italian tokens that can be exchanged for early access to Italian destroyers, permanent camouflage, as well as other various in-game items. So they have some images from the, I'm assuming, the event that you can earn. So it looks like we've got a special camo for the Tier 10, the Regolo, and then some patches for the event. Fields of Tuscany camo, I'm assuming that's just a, uh, a, a normal consumable camo, not a perma camo, just for what it looks like uh, Conqueror there. We have a perma camo for FR25, which is the premium tier 7 Italian DD. And looks like the, Tar the Taranto port has been updated as well. And looks like the homepage for the event... And some new commanders as well. They don't really explain what these are. They kind of just uh, throw them up here. But I'm, I'm guessing it's what you can exchange your tokens for in the event. With the uh, exception of the of the Toronto port being updated. And of course the uh, the um, Italian event. And I'm guessing these are commanders you can earn throughout the event as well. Alright, so that's a pretty brief explanation of the, of the event. Alright. St. Patrick's Day. In celebration of St. Patrick's Day, we have added a special permanent camouflage for Belfast and Belfast 43, a unique commander, and other in-game items. So the Belfast 43 camo is very, 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 very green. Actually, I actually do like that combination of the green and the, the gold there. That actually looks really nice. Eh, yeah, I might actually use that permanent camo. Normally, I'm not too big of a fan of these. Uh, crazy event camos, but the color combination on the superstructure and on the turrets looks really nice. So it's like we can get a, f uh, a, f a flag, a patch, and then what I'm assuming is uh, our unique commander there. They don't give his name, but I'm sure you can hazard a guess as to what his name is supposed to be. Alright, Rogue Wave. The rusty, the rusty battlefields of the post-apocalypse are back. In the new Rogue Wave event, you fight as part of a team of three fighters with the, obje with the objective of defeating three opposing teams. You can join battles as part of a division or alone. Teams that lose all their ships are eliminated from the battle. The last team with at least one ship left afloat wins. We have improved the visual appearance of the Rogue Wave ships to make it easier to distinguish one faction from another. We've also added new achievements. So there's the Sea Scythe. I'm assuming these are the three faction colors as well, so that way you can tell them apart. The Stealthy Row, and the Rumble, and, oh, look at these achievements, those look pretty neat. And, of course, the updated map there as well, looks nice. 
they don't say what the rewards will be and they don't mention if you can get Benham again and I don't think we've heard one way or another if you can they're pretty mum about that on the roadmap stream and uh, it was asked plenty enough in the chat but no one answered it all right, uh, new content, a permanent camouflage for Destroyer Ragnar, available in exchange for ranked tokens. That is a wonderful looking camo there for Ragnar. I love that combination of the black and uh, I think that's either chrome or like brushed aluminum or something there on the bow and on the uh, edges as well. And the uh, kind of fate, not faded gold, but, but um, muted gold there, that is wonderful. Art department is really, 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 really carrying this update. And special flags as well. Okay. Oh my god, they have the freaking Italian hand, hand, hand flag. <laughs> oh, that's great. Alright, so some surprise updates. Improvements to visual effects. Now, they did say they were um, going to improve the, visual, the visuals of the game in the update. But um, these aren't the ones that were talked about. They talked about how they were going to have snow ice and water that's going to accumulate on your ship during battle um, but they didn't mention any of these so we updated the effects of the main and secondary battery guns depth charges hitting the water and islands local weather on the maps hotspot north greece and ice islands the explosion of aircraft on deck when an aircraft carrier is destroyed the effect of receiving a super container and rain so they have i believe four or five videos for us to see these effects so we'll run through them here really quickly and i'll throw them up on screen so the first we should be seeing is the improved rain effect and you can see it actually looks like there's like sheets of rain coming out of the sky it, it looks really 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 freaking good now they did only upload these in 1080p and like 30 fps so unfortunately like they're not in 4k to where we can see even more detail but it looks good just from what we can see here uh, the next one is, I believe, uh, snow. It looks, again, really good. You can see it coming down in more of sheets and, and layers. It looks it, lo it looks more detailed, more naturally free-flowing. It's, it's wonderful. And, I, again, art department hard carry. All right, then we have a new shooting effect for the main battery guns. And it looks like the water's pushed down a lot more. And the smoke looks better, and it lingers around a lot more on the ship. Well, on the ship, and, and again, goes past the ship. It looks great. Uh, right now, the, the smoke looks good right now. I mean, shoot. They didn't update these um, gunfire effects that long ago. The smoke looks good, but it does dissipate kind of fast here. It, it sticks around for a while, and it billows out and spreads out a little bit more. And again, it looks like the particle effects have been updated even more. It, it looks great. And I believe we have the secondaries. No, we have the smaller guns, the needy guns. You can see there again, more of the, the effects have been updated. The water's pushed down a little bit more by the concussion from the blast. And the smoke sticks around for a while longer. It looks great. Really, really, really good. I'm, you know, graphics don't make a game, but I do like it when they make the game look better. And this looks a lot better. And now the CVs, watch this, and the CV blows up, fire spread throughout the deck, and look, the fire spreads from the pl plane to plane, the planes catch on fire, and explode as the carrier sinks. That is such a nice touch there. Wonderful, wonderful art department, again, absolutely knocking it out of the park. And at the end, they ask you to note that all in front of the dev blog is preliminary, yada yada, full information will be published on the, dame, on the game's website. Alright, moving on to the... French cruisers. All right, so close test for 11.2 French cruisers. New French cruisers have been added to the game for testing. We're adding new researchable French cruisers to the game for an upcoming closed test session. To start with the Sheerberg, the Tier 8, a project for super heavy cruisers similar to the Dunkirk class fast battleship with a main battery consisting of eight 305 millimeter guns. So this is essentially like what Dunkirk at tier eight, but in cruiser form. And this thing looks wonky. All these cruisers do y'all. Um, I, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I mean, cruisers with all their guns for the superstructure that really are battle cruisers it's it's going to be an interesting line to to play it looks like it's splitting at tier 8 with the sherberg here all right then we got the breast the tier 9 
a cruiser with 330 millimeter main battery guns concentrated on the bow. The ship's anti-aircraft weaponry is made up of Bofors and Orlikan automatic guns. And there's the breast there. More of, again, it's like a Jean Bar now at tier 9. It's, they look weird. God, I, I, I believe they, and they do explain it further down here. And these are like treaty battleships or treaty battle cruisers or cruisers or, or whatever you want to call them. And then the Marzai, the tier 10. A super heavy cruiser with a displacement of over 30,000 tons. The main armament consists of nine 330mm guns placed in three turrets on the bow of the ship. And it's it's a Le Nelson. <laughs> oh my god. It, it's, and it's in the, um, I mean, you know, it's in the Nelson configuration, if you will, but it's more like the linen because the, uh, no, no, the Nelson had that too. It's not like the Japanese where they have the, the gun facing toward the rear, so it, it is in the Nelson configuration. The... This new branch of ships will find a home beside the existing branch of, of the French cruisers. The distinctive feature of these cruisers are their speed, thanks to their traditionally French-improved engine boost, and the large number of powerful guns with a long reload time, which is compensated with a main battery reload booster. However, they cannot boast of having strong armor. Because of this, coupled with their large size, they are quite vulnerable to HE shells. The preferred combat distance is medium and long range, but thanks to the 139mm secondaries, with increased accuracy, these cruisers can also prove themselves in close quarters combat. So it really does sound like a battle cruiser. They're fast, they have large guns, and they even have good secondaries. Um, so yeah, it sounds like a battle cruiser, and there's another one here too. The French cruiser Toulon, tier 7. The project of a battleship with a displacement of 17,500 tons, which was actually closer to a super heavy cruiser. The purpose and the main purpose envisioned for this ship was to counter the Washington Treaty cruisers. Toulon is the first large cruiser to appear at tier 7. It is armed with powerful main battery guns and a rich choice of consumables for her tier. Main battery reload booster, repair party, Hydroacoustic Search or DFAA and Fighter. So now they're pushing these large cruisers, quote unquote super cruisers, down to tier 7. What a crazy time it is. Alright, then they have this absolute essay here at the end. The large cruisers of this new branch are based on designs developed by the French en engineers in the 1920s and 1930s, the very same ones that the famous Dunkirk and Strasbourg originated from. Perhaps as a way of highlighting just how innovative these ships uh, really were, they received rather unusual names. Oddly enough, by the 1930s, the French Navy had virtually no history of naming its capital ships after cities. In addition to the dreadnought Paris, which entered service in 1914, only two other battleships were planned to begin construction in 1915, with the names Lyon and Lille, although they were cancelled due to the outbreak of the First World War. It may be that Paris was named not strictly after the bustling French capital itself, but perhaps as a tribute to the memory of four mid-18th century ships of the line that served successfully under the name Villa de Paris. This line, like Villa de Mazarai, was originally granted to the ship as a gesture of gratitude from the patriotic, of, for the patriotic gesture of these respective cities' citizens who donated their own money to fund the construction of these mighty sailboats. However, the logic behind naming ships after other cities beyond these two is not clear at first glance, unless you're looking from the sea. Of course, Dunkirk is the most understandable of all. Remembered in the annals of naval history as a hive of French corsairs in the service of the Sun King Louis XIV back in the 17th century. By the time the battleship was laid down in 1932, however, the public's view of the city had evolved to encompass more recent historical happenings. Dunkirk was also now considered the most honored port of France, renowned for the heroism, of, the heroism of its inhabitants during the Great War, the country's third largest harbor after Marzai and Le Havre, and one of the largest naval bases in France, be, uh, becoming in 1939 the headquarters of the commanding officer of French forces in the English Channel and the North Sea. Against its resume, the landlocked Strasbourg looks more looks almost absurd on the surface unless you're factoring in that French sovereignty over the city's region of Alsace has also has had all ooh, had only recently been secured at Germany's expense through much effort and sacrifice during the First World War. However, it is not in vain that Strasbourg is translated as a city at the crossroads 
It is the country's largest river port and, to this day, the second largest on the Rhine. At the beginning of the 20th century, when inland waterways were significantly more consequential, this role was much more appreciated. I feel like freaking Drac, Drac right now. Now, if we also look at Lyon and Lille from this same perspective, it turns out that the first is not only is not only one of the largest cities in France, but through the Rhine River and the canal system, has access both to the Mediterranean Sea and the Atlantic. The industrial centers of Lille also competes for a place in the top three French river ports, being at the crossroads of waterways from Le Havre, Dunkirk, Calais, Belgium, and the Netherlands. It, it seems that this hypothesis about marine national ships being named in honor of French cities is not entirely unfounded, at least to us in World of Warships. It seemed worthy of attention. Therefore, the large crews of the new branch of, French, of the French nation have received appropriate names with which we pay tribute to the glorious history and dynamic mod uh, modernity of the world's most prominent maritime powers. Whew! I'm sure they did this because every time they make a slight naming mistake and then it's happened uh, with French ships and German ships a couple of times, people go absolutely nuts on the form. So I think that's why they included these three paragraphs. But it's really not done yet. They have a couple more tidbits here at the end. Uh, Toulon is the main naval base of France and is currently the largest in Europe and by the beginning of World War II the headquarters of the commander of the French Navy in the Mediterranean. Cherbourg is, is one of the largest historical and modern naval bases and fortresses for, of France since the, Marshall, since the time of Marshal Vauban and the Emperor Napoleon I, a port and military shipbuilding center of great importance on the English Channel. Brest, founded by Cardinal Richelieu, the main naval base of the Marine Nationale Atlantic Fleet and a port on the coast of Brittany, an outpost, and France's gateway to the oceans. Marseille is simply the main seaport of the country, the largest city in the south of France. Ships characteristics. Why do they include that in that sentence? <laughs> oh, someone was up late uploading these to the dev blog. Alright, after that explanation of the ship's names, let's take a look at these things. Alright, so the Cherbourg, the Tier 8, uh, she's got 49,500 hit points, 25 millimeters plating, so yeah, thin plating for what is essentially a Discount battleship battle cruiser, sixty second fire burn time. So yeah, she gets battleship burn time. Uh, so again, two by four three oh five. What is the reload time? Twenty five seconds on eight three hundred five millimeter guns. That is quite long. I mean, if you look at it from a cruiser standpoint, that's fairly long. If you're looking at it from a battleship standpoint, that's I mean decent for the tier, but long for the gun caliber. Of course, these are cruisers shoved in a I'm sorry, battle cruisers shoved into cruiser slots, so you can see why they would do that change. Alright, so the HE does 4,050 maximum damage. You get 51 millimeters of pen and a 17% chance of starting a fire. And the HE comes out the tubes at 905 meters a second. AP does 8,200 maximum damage and it comes out the tubes at 870 meters a second. So that nice, fast French AP. So, these should be very good at slapping cruisers. Especially, again, that tier 8 with 305mm guns. Uh, and the range is 17.7 kilometers. if I didn't say that already. Uh, the secondaries, they have a range of 7.6 kilometers. Alright, maximum speed, 31.9 knots. Uh, rudder shift time of 12.5 seconds. Turning circle radius is 670 meters. And you get damage con, hydro, or a DFAA, fighter, or engine boost, main battery reload booster, and you get a repair party. Uh, they do not mention the repair party's effectiveness now, however. Alright, so the breasts, uh, 55,300 hit points. Again, 25mm plating at tier 9. Uh, again, battleship burn time. So, she has a 25 second reload time again. HE shell does a maximum damage of 4,800. AP shell, 9,700. Um, you get 55mm of HE pin. 35% chance of causing a fire. HE comes out the tubes at 885 meters a second. AP again, 870. And, oh, the Brest has a Sigma of 1.8. And the Sherberg has a Sigma of 1.8 as well. Uh, Sherberg's maximum dispersion 197 meters. Brest is, one, it's, I'm sorry, it's 201. And the secondaries go out again to 7.8 kilometers. 31.5 kilom uh, knocks maximum speed. 720 meter turning circle radius. 13.2 second rudder shift time. And damage con, again, hydro, DFAA, fighter or engine boost, 
Main battle reload boost here to get a repair party with no stats given for that. All right, the Marzai, the tier 10. Uh, 600, I'm sorry, 600, 66,950 hit points. 25 millimeters of plating. 60 second fire burn time. Her fire range is 13, I'm sorry, 19.6 kilometers. And her nine 330 millimeter guns reload in 24 seconds. So a bit of a pickup there. It is a tier 10 with 330s. Uh, HE shell damage maximum is 4,800. 55 millimeters of pen, 35% fire chance. Um, HE velocity, 885 meters a second. AP, 9,700. And initial velocity of 870 meters a second. It is, yes, the same as the breast in terms of the, uh, the shell characteristics. You just get another turret. Okay. Um, secondaries again, 8.3 kilometer range. I tried to do a bit more than the the breast, and she gets the 4x3, 139s, and then she gets 6x2, 139s, as well as same characteristics there. Uh, 33 knots maximum speed, turning circle race of 770 meters, rotation time 14.5 seconds, and damage con, hydro DFAA, fighter engine boost, main battery reload booster, and a repair party. Alright, the Toulon, the tier 7. French battle cruiser. She has 16 millimeter plating, 42,500 hit points, 60 second burn time, that's rough. Her 2x4 305s reload in 28 seconds, maximum H shell damage is 4,050, maximum AP shell damage is 8,000. HE comes out the tubes at 905 meters a second, you get a 70% chance of starting a fire, and a 51 millimeter HE pin. AP comes out the tubes at 798 meters a second, and she has a 28 second reload time. Uh, secondaries go out to 2.3, I'm sorry, 6.3 kilometers. Maximum speed at 30 knots. 710 meter turning circle radius. Rush of time of 11.5 seconds. And she gets damage con, hydro or fi I'm sorry, hydro or DFAA, fighter, main battery reload booster, repair party with statistics this time. She has a 28 second um, duration, 212.5 hit points per second. We lose at 80 seconds, she gets three charges space. All right. So they sound like they are going to be very interesting ships. They sound fairly accurate. Uh, it's a nice balance of accuracy and uh, reload time here. And it is French AP. The French AP does hit quite hard. So I imagine these ships are going to be very good, especially the Marzai at absolutely punishing broadside cruiser. Just one thing that French AP is really good for, especially if you play the Dunkirk or the Strasbourg. Um, I mean, shoot, if you slip up and show one of those ships your broadside, you are going to get absolutely slapped by that French Hyper AP. Um, the turret configuration will make it interesting to see how these are played. Since they are cruisers and, I mean, like the tier 8 with a 25mm bow, that will be okay. But the tier 9 and the tier 10, um, shoot, there's, again, plenty, plenty that, that will overmatch your bow armor at that tier. So I don't think you're going to be able to really bow tank very well. They might have an icebreaker bow, for all we know. Um, that happened with the German battle cruisers. We'll see if that happens with the French. And if they do, then obviously that's going to crank their survivability up a bit more. But they did say in this dev blog that these aren't to be played at close in range. These are supposed to be paid, played at medium to longer range. So it will be very interesting to see how these cruisers develop and what type of hills they get. Well, we, do know that we, do know, we do know that they get hills. We just don't know what kind just yet. So that's it for the dev blog, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. What do you think about the changes coming to the game and about the French battle cruisers, super cruisers, large cruisers, super large cruisers, whatever you guys want to call them. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. We're on to 35,000 subs. We just passed 33,200 a few days ago, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. I will be live streaming, by the way, right here on the channel from 5 p.m. U.S. Central Time to 8 p.m. U.S. Central Time, so please come out for that. We had a fantastic time last week, and I can't wait to see all you guys there again tonight. Again, guys, hope you're having a wonderful day, have a wonderful weekend, and I hope to catch you guys in the next one.